We're really pleased to announce that after nine years, we finally have new records for fusion yield with deuterium as the fuel and for energy of the plasmoid and of the ion beam. Now, this progress can only be made with the funding that comes from you, from all of our investors. If you want to invest to continue this funding going and to continue this progress, please visit us at lppfusion.com. The fusion yield record is not of a breakthrough quality. It's only an increase of about 10% over the uh, one-shot record we achieved back in 2016. This is not a record for a single shot, but for the scientifically more important uh, categories of two shots, three shots, four shots in a row, and the median energy release for the entire series of shots at the same conditions. So this is very important because, first of all, it shows that we can repeatedly get these high fusion yields, much higher than any that have been achieved by any other private fusion company, and we can get them repeatably with the present setup of the machine. Second, this confirms the new theoretical predictions that we've been developing over the last few years with the new modifications to our theory of fusion yield in this machine. And that gives us confidence in our far, far higher predictions of the yield that we'll obtain with our ongoing experiments with hydrogen boron. Now, the increase in the plasmoid energy and in the ion beam energy are much more significant. This is a doubling of the energy that we've repeatedly achieved of four kilojoules up to eight kilojoules. This is pretty high uh, efficiency. This represents 20% of the total energy in the machine at the time the plasmoid forms. Again, this very much confirms our theoretical prediction and gives us confidence that we'll get even higher efficiencies with hydrogen and boron. These deuterium shots have been taken as cleaning shots between the hydrogen boron shots. We know that the shots with deuterium and with a mix of deuterium and nitrogen clean off both the anode and the uh, insulator. So that's what's been increasing the yields and giving us these good results. These results for the ion beam energy have been confirmed by two separate sets of instruments. One is our Rogowski coil. Now, the Rogowski coil is a little uh, specially designed coil of wire that the beam passes through, and it directly measures the current of the beam. And from the timing of the beam, it measures the velocity of the particles and therefore the energy in the beam. Second, we have below the bottom of our drift tube a gamma ray spectrometer. This measures the spectrum of the gamma rays that come off of the drift tube when the beam smashes into the bottom plate. So by calculating what the ion spectrum is, we get a direct check of both the uh, current in the beam and the energy. And in both cases, these correspond for the two instruments. So this gives us confidence that what we've seen is valid. Stay tuned. We're going to have more results from, for both deuterium and boron in the coming weeks.